Without further ado, though, I'd like to introduce them, the first candidate. Uh, this is Mr. Drake Nickel. Hi. My name is Drake Nickel, and for my masterworks, I customize a Honda GL500 Silverwing. Why did I choose a highly favored and respected motorcycle to modify? My dad and I chose this motorcycle because it was inexpensive. My dad thought it would be good I a good idea because of his knowledge of motorcycles, and it is a popular bike to customize. I also found out online that many motorcycle customizers use this model. Many custom bike builders have done multiple creative designs for this model for years. Some slimmer styles of bikes they have done are bobbers, scramblers, and cafe racers. When I am finished, I will have a cafe racer. As you can see on screen, there are many different ways to customize a motorcycle, <laughs> such as this crocodile bike or this cow bike. <laughs> the bikes I will be focusing on are a little less exciting, but still awesome. The construction of a bobber includes stripping excess body work from the motorcycle, removing the front fender, shortening the rear fender, which is bobbed, as in bobtail, and all extra parts are reduced removed to reduce weight. Scramblers are raced on short, closed off road tracks with a variety of obstacles. The motorcycle has a small fuel tank for lightness and compactness, and long travel suspension allows riders to take jumps at high speeds and go off-roading in the backcountry. The Cafe Racers started a generation of customizing and tricking out bikes because they look so good. It is based off 1960s Grand Prix motorcycles. Cafe racers are built for visual minimalism, featuring low-mounted handlebars, seat cowling, and an elongated fuel tank. And frequently, knee grips are indented into the fuel tank. The term cafe racer was created by British motorcycle enthusiasts of the 1960s. Bikes were used for short, quick rides between cafes or pubs. A cafe racer is a motorcycle that is built for speed and not comfort. I chose a cafe racer because I like the sleek, minim sleek design and visual minimalism. To get it to look like that, obviously I had to learn a lot, such as how an engine works. I had to learn about the two main types of engines, the four-stroke and the two-stroke. The four-stroke, well, has four strokes, and the first stroke is the intake stroke, when the, pist when the air fuel mixture is pulled into the cylinder by the piston and the valve is open. The second stroke is the compression stroke when the piston is at the top of the chamber and, the air, and both valves are closed and the air fuel mixture is compressed. The, sec, the third stroke is the combustion stroke when the air fuel mixture is ignited by the spark plugs sending the piston down. The fourth stroke is the exhaust stroke when the exhaust valve is open and the air is pushed out of the cylinder. My bike is a four stroke. In a two-stroke, the end of the combustion stroke and the start of the compression stroke happen at the same time. The intake and the exhaust are both working at the same time. Uh, two-strokes are most commonly found on lawn mowers and dirt bikes. Starting the bike, here's a picture of what I wanted my bike to look like. Now obviously, this guy had a whole lot more money than I did and probably had a, better, had an, a lot more knowledge of bikes than I do. Here's an entry from the process journal on the day I got the bike. 
September 3rd, 2016. I just got the bike from Craigslist. I couldn't wait to begin my project and get started. We started work on the bike by taking off the rear fender, all of the luggage bags, and the fairings. I'm very nervous about all the work I have to get done, but with my dad's help, I'm sure we'll get it done. Body work. For body work, I thought I was going to have to buy all of these parts and spend a whole lot of money, but apparently, all you need is a little creativity and help from a local welder, and anything can come out looking great. <laughs> such as this luggage rack from Peter Ryan Metalworks, and how on screen you see the uh, rough edge of the bike before, and now here it is very smooth because my dad cut a pipe in half and welded it on there and grinded it out for many hours, it, and it came out looking great. Painting was very simple. All you had to do was sit there for a, with a wire brush for three hours, dipping it in some soap every so often, and sometimes your blood. <laughs> After that, all I had to do was prime it with a special formula to help make the paint stick. I chose army green because I think it might, I think it is a really cool color and makes the bike look really awesome. Forks. Here's a blurb from my process journal on the day I did the forks. February 11th, 2017, my dad and I spray painted the forks, frame, and suspension. While my dad was trying to paint the forks, he turned one upside down after we just replaced all of the fork oil. And now, because a little bit of it leaked out, we have to replace all the fork oil in that one fork. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Luckily for me, the engine was already working, so I felt like I didn't have to change much to the engine. There's not much point in customizing a working engine. All I did was paint and clean it, and it came out looking awesome. Blowing the exhaust was fairly easy. All you had to do was uh, get some pipes laying around the shop, uh, and a, a muffler, which quiets the uh, bike down when you hear it. And we found two curved pipes, weld them onto the headers, and weld the muffler onto the pipes. We also wrap the exhaust headers with tape because it makes it look cool. <laughs> I had two seats. Uh, the first seat I got was from Bent Bike, which is a motorcycle salvage shop in Seattle, which is sadly no more. Uh, I thought it was a really cool design, but unfortunately it was way too small and very uncomfortable. The second seat I got was the original seat from the bike that my dad and I took all the leather off and the foam and we talked to a local pollster, Alethea, at Artisan Square about a new seat and she came down to the shop, talked about colors and what I wanted it to look like and it came out looking great. <sighs> Wiring. <laughs> Now comes the part I had no clue about. I already failed my electricity unit in science. <laughs> I was a lost cause. But luckily, thank you to IPS and for picking such great advisors, Randy wired the whole bike for me while I was away with my class in Quebec. <laughs> thank you, Randy. It came out looking like this piece of art. Anytime you attempt a, problem, a project this big and don't know what you're doing, there will be a few problems to solve. One of the problems I had was actually trying to get the bike to run. After I did all the work to it, the problem was fuel, I thought, fuel wasn't going to the carburetor, but after looking at the bike, it just ran. I'm not sure how it did it, but it did. But hey, it's a Honda, they cure themselves. The next problem was when me and Colin the painter were in the shop and were talking on the other side of the room. Now, he had this rig that he set up and shook it and we thought it was gonna work great, but as soon as the tank was over there and as soon as we turn our backs to it, it falls down, we're looking away, we both turn around, oh shoot. But also I do think the, uh, Dent makes the bike look a whole lot tougher. <laughs> Conclusion. 
Now that I have fully finished my build, I have an awesome looking vehicle that I can enjoy for many years. In the beginning, I had a picture in my mind of what I wanted my bike to look like. I am pleased to say that I achieved transforming the bike to what I wanted. I had a lot to learn along the way, such as electrical work, body work, fixing broken parts, replacing air filters, wiring, thanks Randy, and generally understanding how an engine works. Now all I have to do is learn how to drive the beast and get my license. <laughs> Some of the things that I've learned from doing this bike is never be afraid to ask for help, because without help I probably wouldn't have finished this masterworks. I also learned that if you want to get anything done on a certain time frame, you have to make yourself want to do that and have to commit the hours in the shop. I learned that people on Bowen are usually generous with their time and help give advice on any subject. Even if something is 30 years old, it doesn't mean that it can't be used anymore. I found that with a lot of effort, some blood, sweat, and a few tears, and a lot of help from my advisors, my dad and I could give the bike another 30 years and have a sweet ride. I'd like to thank my I'd like to thank my dad because I wouldn't have even started this project without him. I would also like to thank my mom too for constantly bugging me to write my paper and telling me to practice even when I didn't want to. Uh, I'd also like to thank Randy and Peter for adding to the bike and showing me tips and tricks on how to make it work better even when I wasn't there. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Jen, for helping me finish my paper and everything through the project uh, and finishing the slideshow for me. <laughs> the next, I'd also like to thank Alethea at Sea to Sky Upholstery for making my seat look awesome. She's very cheap, too. I recommend her. Uh, thank you, Colin, for helping me tank, paint my tank and make it look awesome. And finally, thank you for watching my masterworks. I'm extraordinarily pleased to announce that Mr. Drake Nickel has completed all the requirements of his masterworks. Yeah.